This video is sponsored by Soccer Star Shop, the best place to get yourself the latest football boots and kits for ridiculously cheap prices. The link to their website is down in the description and use the code S2G to get yourself a 5% off on your purchase. This Inyaki cutting inside is still Inyaki Williams. He's on an amazing run and he scored. He probably ran from his own half and he's now scored against Valencia. Thomas finding Angel Correa and Angel Correa scores immediately after changing the formation. We have scored now. Hey guys, how's it going? It is S2G and welcome back to another one of these Atletico Madrid career mode episodes. This is season 1 episode number 5 and in today's episode we've got a huge game against Bayern Munich in the Champions League at the Allianz Arena. If you guys are enjoying this series, make sure to drop a like on this video. Let's see if you guys can smash out 100 likes again, that would be incredible and make sure to subscribe for more FIFA 17 content. So guys, our first game of this episode is against Bayern Bayern Munich away from home and they are of course top of our Champions League group. If we do manage to beat Bayern Munich away from home we will go top of our group which is of course what we want you know finishing first in the group does give us a very good advantage uh, if we do progress to the round of 16 which we probably will so would love to finish first in the group. Apart from the Bayern game we've got Sevilla and La Liga which is always a tough game especially away from home and they are doing pretty well in La Liga right now. Malaga is isn't going to be an easy game as well. I probably will be simming this one against Valadoli because, well, it's a cup game and we should be winning this uh, one pretty easily even with our second team. So before we get any further, guys, it is now time to find out who was our informed player from the previous episode. You guys have voted for Rinyaki Williams as your informed player from the previous episode. 69% of you guys voted for Rinyaki Williams and hence he gets himself his third informed card of the season. We're only in October right now and he's got himself his third informed card. What a season Rinyaki Williams is having for us. He's on fire. So guys, it is now time for a press conference, so let's get into it. The first question is from Victor. There have been rumours of Diego Costa wanting to leave Chelsea and wanting to join Atletico Madrid. Are you interested in buying him? Now, yes, guys, I would love to have Diego Costa at the club. Yes, he's a bit of a cunt, but still, guys, he's a fantastic player to have. And of course, I would love to have him instead of Gamiero, who hasn't been performing well for us. So yeah, guys, all in all, if Diego Costa is willing to join Atletico again, I would love to have him back. Moving on to our next question, there have been rumours that Gaia has been linked to the club, what are your thoughts? A lot of transfer rumours going around now. Yes guys, I am interested in signing Jose Luis Gaia, probably next season, not now, because I think Felipe Luis will be good enough until the end of the season. He is dropping in his overall, so we've got a plan for the future, so I think Gaia would be a perfect replacement for him. What are your thoughts on these transfers guys? Let me know by dropping a comment down in the comment section. If you guys have any other press conference questions, drop them down in the comment section and I'll try to answer as many as possible. So guys, it is now time to face Bayern Munich at the Allianz Arena, away from home, of course, a massive game. Do you guys think we can beat Bayern? Drop in your predictions for this game down in the comments section, of course. This is the team that I've gone for, for this one against Atletico Madrid. You might be surprised seeing Gamiero starting in such a crucial game, but well, Angel Correa isn't fully fit for this one. If he was, I would surely be playing Correa because he's been on fire this season. Gamiero, although has been really poor, he's getting Getting another chance to prove his worth and right now at this moment I'm looking to sell Gamiero but he could prove me wrong if he puts in a good shift against Bayern Munich. So guys let's hopefully get at least a draw from this one against Bayern. This is the Bayern Munich 11 and look at that team man, especially that defence. It's going to be difficult for us to score a goal against that defence but their midfield is strong as well. Vidal, Medel, Javi Alonso, Ribery, Robin and Lewandowski leading the attack. It's a very nice team indeed. It is going to be difficult for us. Antoine Griezmann gets away from the challenge, now Felipe Luis, Gamiero is open in space, Gamiero with the shot and he's just missed but that's good signs from Gamiero, at least he's getting involved in the play, decent attempt though from him. Now Antoine Griezmann, where is the Bayern Munich defence? I have no idea but I'm not complaining, Griezmann plays it through into Kevin Gamiero, this is his chance to score and he's missed again. Now into Antoine Griezmann does well. Griezmann gets away from Hummels. Griezmann with the shot and he's just missed. That was a very nice attempt indeed from Antoine Griezmann, especially to get away from Mats Hummels. The shot wasn't the best, but still a good attempt. Gamiero. 
Camiero with the shot and he hits the crossbar. Camiero kind of has been unlucky in this game, but at least he's putting in a good performance, which he wasn't doing in the previous games I played him. So, well, very unlucky there. That would have been one hell of a goal. Now, Oscar DeMarcos. DeMarcos finding Antoine Griezmann. Griezmann somehow gets the ball back. Griezmann with the shot and Hummels with the block. A corner for us though. Let's see if we can create something from this corner. It's going to be taken by Koke. Griezmann traps it and takes the shot and Neuer keeps it out somehow. We've got another corner. It's going to be taken by Koke again. This one's decent. Cleared only to Gabi. Gabi gets away from the defender. Gabi with the shot and Neuer forced to make a brilliant save. Griezmann. Carrasco, fake shots the defender, still Yanni Carrasco, only Lam to beat, what a tackle there from Philip Lam, that is why he's one of the best right backs in the world. Iron Robin on the attack for Bayern Munich, literally this is the first chance Bayern Munich have had, Lewandowski with the shot, what a save from Oblak, and on the rebound Lewandowski does score, Bayern have had literally just one chance in this game, they've taken it guys, and hence they are leading in this game, that just shows having a good clinical finisher, how much influence does that have. It's full time guys and Bayern Munich do sneak away with the win. We definitely deserve to win this one. We had the better chances. We just didn't take them. But anyway, sometimes that happens in football. When they do come to the Calderon, hopefully we'll be able to beat them and hence get the top spot in our group. That loss against Bayern Munich seems to be causing us a lot of problems now because now PSV have got 4 points as well. This group is turning out to be more interesting than I thought it would. Hopefully guys, we can pick up a few wins in the Champions League in our upcoming Champions League games. This guys is just pure bullshit and it's pretty annoying as well. Diego Godin who's been in Spain for the last 10 years, he even has a Spanish nationality. Apparently this guy is unsettled. How does that even make sense? That is just ridiculous man, come on EA. I just don't understand this game sometimes but because of this we might have to sell Godin which is really a bummer because Godin is such a good centre back in this game and I really don't want to sell him. What is your thoughts on this guys? Drop a comment and let me know down in the comment section of course. We would love to know your opinion on this situation. I'll try my best to keep Godin at the club. He is of course one of the most important players in this side and I don't want to sell him guys. And you know what's the funny thing if we do actually end up selling Godin he's probably just going to join another Spanish team which again is just freaking bullshit and that's why this unsettled thing I just don't understand on career mode. Anyways guys let's just forget about that Godin situation for now as we have a really tough game coming up against Sevilla. They are 12 in the league but they're not the team to underestimate, they've got a fantastic squad so it's going to be a tough one for us but hopefully we can win this game and if we do win I think we will go second in the league which is really nice so let's try and win this one against Sevilla. So guys, this is the team that have gone for this severe game away from home. Angel Correa and Saul are the two changes I've made to the squad from that Bayern Munich game. Godin does keep his place even though he's unsettled because I know he's a quality defender and he's not going to let off the pitch issues affect his uh, on the pitch game and all. So let's get into this game against Sevilla and potentially get all three points. Iñaki Williams in a very good position. Playing it into Koke. Koke with the finesse shot. Ball falls to Iñaki Williams who takes the shot. But it's a block from the Sevilla centre-back, Nico Pareja. What a chance though from Iñaki. He probably should have scored. Luciano Vieto in the attack. That's a great tackle from Gimenez. Gimenez has been rock solid in this game for us. Carrasco gives it away to Ben Yedda. Still Ben Yedda. Ben Yedda with the shot. Another block there from Jose Maria Gimenez who has been on top form. And of course Oblak then on the rebound does actually save it. That's it guys, full time, a disappointing nil-nil result. I mean, our last two games haven't gone well for us at all. Yes, against Bayern we performed well, but now against Sevilla, we weren't good at all. Sevilla, probably the better side, and uh, that is kind of annoying. Apart from that, both teams didn't create much in this game. That is very disappointing. Hopefully that will change in the upcoming games. We've simmed this game against Real Valladolid in the Copa del Rey and we get a 2-0 victory. I'm pretty sure it's a two-leg tie, so we've got a second leg as well. But we are now in a very good position to progress to the next round. Even though we did draw our previous game against Sevilla, we still have got 17 points in the league in 8 games and most teams have played 9 or 10 games, so that's pretty good. If we do win our next game, we could potentially go top of the league. That would be incredible. It is against Malaga, Tom. You'll fancy us to win this one, but hopefully we can score some goals because I think in our last couple of games that we've played, we haven't scored, which is not good at all. Hopefully our strikers, Griezmann and Correa, get the job done today. 
This is the team that I'm going for for this Malaga game. Pretty similar to the side I fielded against Sevilla. Hopefully it's good enough to get us all three points. Griezmann somehow still has the ball. Still Antoine Griezmann. Plays it out wide into Angel Correa. Let's see what we can produce from this chance. Correa plays it inside into our right back. Who holds on to the defender. Plays it back into Correa who takes the shot. And I think it takes a block from the defender. But this was our first chance. And a pretty decent one indeed. Carrasco finding Felipe Luis. Luis cuts inside. What kind of a pass was that from Felipe Luis? Oh, Gabi somehow gets the ball. Gabi with the shot and it hits the post. Well, we got a chance out of nothing. Gabi probably should have scored. To be fair, it was a difficult angle. Another corner. Again, we haven't been productive without corners at all this season. Maybe now, finally, Godin misses a very easy chance. After getting a free header like that, he should score. Felipe Luis now. Now Griezmann. Correa. Into Koke, chance for Koke, Koke with the shot and the keeper makes a very good save and the defender does clear it. Gabi again, now Koke. Through into Antoine Griezmann, big chance for Griezmann and they've cleared it somehow. What is going on man, we just can't seem to find the back of the net. Now Angel Correa, somehow still has the ball, Correa gets away from the defender. Angel Correa with the shot and how has the keeper saved that? We just can't find the back of the net, as I said. It's kind of annoying now. We haven't scored in our last three games, including this one. I really want to score a goal now. Here's Malaga on the counter. Here's Johnny for Malaga. We've given them too much space down this right-hand side. Cross is put in. Our defender does clear it. In fact, it's Carrasco's track back to defend. Here's Charles who takes the shot. Jimenez with a crucial block. The volley from Johnny is going above the cross. But again, Jimenez saving us in this game. 66 minutes into this game and we are still unable to score so I've decided to change formation. Now we are going to play with a 4-1-2-1-2 formation with Correa and Cam. I'm bringing on Fernando Torres in for Gabi. Uh, maybe an extra attacking threat could get us the goal in this one. We've just got a couple of minutes left guys and I'm just doing all what I can to get that goal. Felipe Luis finds Correa. Now Torres, but oh, Rika clears it. This is frustrating, man. Come on, let's start again. We've got three minutes at a time. Correa. Now Iñaki Williams. Let's see what he can do. Iñaki taking it inside. Finds it. Griezmann, what kind of a touch was that? Why such a heavy touch from one of the best plays in this game? Griezmann, man. This is very disappointing. Another draw. Nil-nil against Malaga. We should be doing better. And I'm really disappointed to bring such awful gameplay for you guys. We lost against Bayern. We drew against Sevilla. Yes, we did win against Maladoli, but we did sim that game. And now a freaking draw against Malaga. I, I'm just sorry, guys. Hopefully next episode I can bring you guys some better gameplay. But another draw, guys. This could cause us problems in La Liga. Let's now have a look at the La Liga table. Well guys, at least we are still in the top four after those last two games, you know, two draws, very disappointing indeed. But look at Real Madrid, they are in the top four now. I remember one question being asked that whether Real Madrid will get relegated. Well, that answers it. I mean, what a comeback. They were in the relegation zone for a while and are now in the top four. That is ridiculous. Great comeback there from Real Madrid. But we got to improve, guys. I want to win the league in the first season. I think it's a possibility. I think we've got a good chance of doing so because look at Barcelona. They are struggling and Real Madrid haven't hit top form. We can't afford to keep dropping points. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this episode. In the next episode, we've got Club de Bruges, Granada and Real Sociedad. I might fit in that game against Real Madrid. Not too sure about that. But a lot of good stuff coming up. You know, Sociedad is always a tough game. The Madrid derby is absolutely huge. But anyways, before we end this episode, let's just have a quick look at our board expectations. So it does look like we should have the financial objective done pretty soon. 50% of it is already done, which is pretty nice. We haven't done much of the development objective. In fact, I haven't, I haven't even hired a scout yet because I haven't found a 5-star, five 5-star five scout. So as soon as I find a scout who's got 5-star judgment and, you know, 5-star experience, I will sign him up and probably send him to Spain. Uh, brand exposure 1, getting done pretty quickly. Nice to see the continental and domestic uh, depend upon our results at the end of the season. But guys... Before we end this episode, it is now time for you guys to vote for the player of the episode or the informed player from this episode. Now, there aren't too many nominees for this one because we didn't have any goal scorer actually. So, it's going to be a couple of defenders who did actually perform really well. The first one being Jose Maria Jimenez. Of course, a clean sheet against Sevilla and also a clean sheet against Malaga. The next one is also a defender, Diego Godin. 
who I believe was really good in this episode. I, I guess I couldn't show you guys much highlights from him. He really didn't make any mistake. He was rock solid at the back. Gimenez is probably the better one, but it's up to you guys to decide. Only two nominees for this one. It's up to you guys to decide. Vote by clicking that I on the top right of the screen as your informed player of this episode. No strikers or midfielders for this one. You guys can probably guess why. We didn't score a goal from open play. Not open play, Leeward. We didn't actually score a goal itself in this episode apart from the game we sim. Very disappointing indeed. Hopefully next episode we can start scoring some goals. That is pretty much it for this episode. Really hope you guys are enjoying the series. If you guys are, make sure to drop a like on this video. 100 likes would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe for more FIFA 17 content. And I will see you guys very soon with another career mode video.